All right, thanks for watching. And I don't know if you know this meme, but there's this joke that says, in class, the professor teaches two plus two equals to four. And then on the homework, he says, you know, what is three plus one? And then on the exam, it's always, John has four apples, eats one, calculate the mass of the sun. Well, without further ado, today I will calculate the mass of the sun or at least give you some approximation. So here's just a couple of facts you need to know. First of all, the radius of the sun, of the sum, no, different kind of sum, is r, and that's, I believe, 6.9 times 10 to the 10 centimeters. That's one thing. Second of all, in order to find a mass, you need a density. So according to like NASA's model, the density f of x, y, z is given by the following crazy number, 519 r to the 4 minus 1630 r cubed plus 1844 r squared minus 889R plus 155 grams per cubic centimeters. What is little r? That's just square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared over the radius, which the numerator we can write conveniently in terms of spherical coordinates, as rho over capital R. Uh, maybe let me write my rows better so it look like they look like E's otherwise. It's rho. <laughs> and what this says essentially is that apparently at the core of the sun, so if r equals to zero, it's not very dense, so 155, but the more you approach the actual radius of the sun, I think the more dense you get if you sum up all those numbers. Mm. Okay. And of course, if you see squared of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, it's a good idea to use spherical coordinates. So now, what is the mass of the sun? The important thing is, if you have a density, then to get the mass, you triple integrate that density. So the mass is the triple integral over the sun of f of x, y, z, dx, dy, dz. Or again, think of the sun as a spherical thing. So okay, the way we represent the sun if we with spheres. And again, that might be completely inaccurate, but you'll see the result is quite surprising. And as I said, you want to write this in terms of spherical coordinates. So we need our radius, we need our angle theta, and we need our angle phi. So first of all, the radius rho, what does it go to? It goes from zero to the actual radius of the sun. So rho is from zero to r. Next, the second thing we need is the horizontal angle, or as I like to call it the horizontal angle, like theta. And because we're having the whole circle, it makes a full revolution. So theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Lastly, we need what I call the vertical angle, phi. And what you have to understand, the vertical angle goes from 0 to pi. Because if you go a bit more than that, then you can write this also in terms of theta. So the point is we want a 1 to 1 correspondence. So phi is from 0 to pi. And therefore, all we need to do, we need to integrate f with those bounds. So what we get? We get integral from dot dot dot. Again, rho is from 0 to r, so d rho. 
theta is from 0 to 2 pi, d theta. And lastly, phi is from 0 to pi. And now f, which is, again, think of f of x, y, z. And then we need, so try d phi. The next thing we need is the Jacobian, because dx dy dz equals to something times d rho d theta d phi, and that Jacobian is rho squared sine of phi. Now, again, what is f? Remember, um, yeah, f was this horrible thing, so f of x, y, z equals to 519 r to the 4 plus blah, 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 but if you want to write this in terms of spherical coordinates, so r was just rho over 4. Sorry, rho over r. 4 plus da, da, da. So the point is, f is actually, it doesn't depend on theta and phi at all. So we can just integrate it separately, which means this horrible integral becomes as follows. That's equal to the integral from 0 to r of f times rho squared d rho. Integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1. There's no theta involved here at all. And integral from 0 to pi of sine of phi d phi. Now, this thing becomes 2 pi. Here, an antiderivative of sine is minus cosine, so we get minus cosine of pi, which is minus minus 1, which is 1, uh, plus cosine of 0, which is 1, so in the end we get 2. And so we get 4 pi times that integral, but that becomes integral from 0 to r of 519, rho over r to the fourth plus blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to write down the same formula again. But the point is we get 519 rho over r to the fourth plus other expressions which just depend on rho over r. So it might be a good idea now to just use a u substitution. So if you want let u be rho over r, or just let's call it little r, so let r be equals to rho over big R, so then dr equals to rho, sorry, I forgot the rho squared. So then dr equals to uh, d rho over little, sorry, d rho over r, so d rho equals to r dr. And lastly, if rho is 0, r is 0. If rho is capital R, little r is 1. So in the end, what we get is 4 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of our expression 519 r to the 4 minus 1630 r cubed dot 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 plus 155 times. So rho just becomes capital R times little r. So we get capital R times little r and dr. Sorry, times uh, the Jacobian, which is capital R dr. D rho is capital R dr. And there's a square here. <laughs> All we need to do is to calculate that. So, almost done. So, this capital R squared comes out. This capital R comes out. And we get 4 pi capital R cubed times the integral from 0 to 1 519 r to the fourth times r squared becomes 519 
r to the sixth. And the point is everything else, you just multiply, add two to each power. So minus one, six, three, zero, r to the fifth, r to the fifth. And now let me write down the rest, plus one, eight, four, four, r to the four, minus eight, nine, nine, r cubed, plus 155 r squared dr. And now we can calculate that. So four pi r cubed times, so 519 over seven r to the seven, minus 1630 over six r to the six, plus 1844 over fifth r to the fifth, minus 899, over four r to the four plus one five five r cubed over three and that's from zero to one it looks like a horrible expression well it is but we're dealing with the sun here <laughs> but the point is all those powers just become either one or zero so you have four pi r cubed times 519 over 7 minus 1630 over 6 plus 1844 over 5 and minus 899 over 4 plus 155 over 3 minus 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So the other terms are literally trivial. And in case you're curious what this equals to, so if you want exact answers, that's our exact answer for a mass of the sun. But if you're curious, that equals roughly to 4 pi r cubed times 0 0.6929. And that's roughly 4 pi times that is roughly 8.7067 r cubed. And remember what r was? r was 6.9 times 10 to the 10. So if you calculate this roughly, that becomes, again, centimeters, that becomes 2.86 times 10 to the 33 grams. Because our density was in grams per cubic centimeters, and that was in centimeters. And last but not least, you get that in our model, the mass of the sun is roughly 2.86 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And that's based on the mass, uh, on the model that NASA gave us, and also on the maybe wrong assumption that the sun is spherical. It might be elliptic or something. But I want to show you something cool. This is the answer that we got. Let me now tell you the actual measurement of the mass of the sun. Actually, the correct answer, what is this? It's 1.989 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. Not bad at all. So not only are we in the same order of magnitude, it's still something times 10 to the 30, but also those numbers, they're not off by much. They're off by less than one, which is pretty precise, I would say. So good job, NASA. I'm proud of you. You have a good model and good job math for coming up with spherical coordinates that help us calculate the mass of the sun. So hopefully now, if John has four apples and eats one, you can actually calculate the mass of the sun. Uh, all right, so if you like that, you know, click like and please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.